Having studied whales here in Galapagos for many, many years, I can say that the learning process for the human being is far greater by studying whales in their natural habitat and in their natural way to be, um, without rushing in amongst them and trying to select whales to kill. Therefore, from a point of view of studying whales, we believe that it is simply not necessary to kill them. And this brings up the question of scientific whaling. This permitted nations, the whaling nations, to slaughter whales for science. Now, this word science is a word which can be used in various contexts. And in the context of this terminology, it really does seem to have been invented as a cover for continuing to whale and to increase the whale quotas over time so that commercial whaling could once more resume. If more information is to be gathered concerning whale populations, uh, genetic relationships, migration, um, it is suggested that far more can be done with uh, observation methods, with, uh, even with satellite tags, which can be placed on the animals, but not killing them. They should follow a methodology, a scientific methodology, in producing results which are, uh, are capable of being repeated and are a solid basis for making some kind of judgment. This is totally opposed to the viewpoint that whaling is a cultural activity and should be maintained for that reason. For culture is a belongs to a society. It is a unique property of a society. Science is not a unique property of a community. It is belonged to the world and should follow the methodology accepted by the world. I think it's really important to establish uh, the terminology. When we talk about cultural whaling, we're talking about local coastal communities that developed whaling techniques many, many years ago, centuries ago, and have been following that culture ever since. When we talk about commercial whaling, we're talking about a pelagic whaling industry in which vessels leave port and travel thousands of miles to well-known whaling grounds and kill whales. Uh, obviously, they would like to kill as many as they can. Now we have the scientific whaling, which is a loophole. The results from this research are not abundant and have little depth to them. I was asked if I would be a member of the board of Sea Shepherd, and I was very happy and willing to accept that position amongst people who are truly dedicated to the perseverance of life on Earth. And I totally respect their feelings and their actions in order to preserve the life of the oceans. The question is, whaling or no whaling? It doesn't matter whether we're talking about scientific whaling or commercial high seas fisheries. The world has moved on, and the way we will survive on this planet is be, by being able to adapt ourselves to the changing world. The ecology of the oceans is being upset left, right, and center, and we need to leave all the elements in the ocean so that it can recover its strength and beauty. I would like to read to you a paragraph from a book written by Sir Alistair Hardy on an experience which he had 90 years ago on a scientific trip to the South Atlantic, Antarctica, 
I think it is very apt today because this was written 90 years ago and it records how he felt as a guest aboard a whaling vessel running out of South Georgia. It is a relief that there is not this ghastly playing on the line, for one can only look on it with horror. It is a barbarous business. These creatures are mammals like ourselves, and I have no doubt they feel pain. It is amazing that they can put up such a long fight as they sometimes do after an explosion has occurred in their insides and when every effort they make to get away must increase the agony of the cable pulling in the wound. Perhaps as often as not the whale is killed almost at once, but as we have seen it may not. It would never be allowed if it took place on land. Think what an outcry there would be if we hunted elephants with explosive harpoons fired from the cannon of a tank and then played the wounded beasts upon a line. The idea of shooting human enemies with explosive barbed bullets on lines does not bear thinking of. It is amazing how blind and unfeeling man, the carnivorous hunter, can be.